I'm LA's science reporter, Jacob Margolis, and I want you to join me for We Are Where We Eat, LA's live event series with the James Beard Foundation, where we'll take a look at how the climate emergency has affected restaurants here in LA. It's July 18th. Tickets at las.com slash events. We're introducing a new podcast from LA's studios, Passing the Mantle. Exploring stories that connect generations and sometimes divide them. I'm Larry Mantle. And I'm Desmond, his son and co-host. Listen to Passing the Mantle wherever you listen to podcasts. Today on the LA Report. The heat wave peaks today and tomorrow. Weather forecasters caution people who aren't near the beach to avoid being outside for any length of time and drink plenty of water. Air quality officials warn of smoke and particles from fireworks still lingering and have issued advisories to be aware of bad air quality throughout the day. And you'll hear why an Asian-American foster parent is urging others to sign up to help AAPI children in the system. What some of these kids want is just to be able to live a normal life. Having that similar background, it does help a lot. Good morning. It's Friday, July 5th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from LAS 89.3. Today is expected to be the hottest day of the heat wave, and the National Weather Service advises people away from the coast to make sure they limit time outdoors in the sun and stay hydrated to avoid any heat-related illness. Triple-digit temperatures are expected in the coastal valleys, the Inland Empire, the Antelope Valley, and the Low Desert. Even elevations up to 6,000 feet could see close to 100 degrees. Some record-setting highs are possible. Tomorrow will be a scorcher as well before temperatures start to drop on Sunday by a couple of degrees at least. Last night, fireworks lit up the sky for Independence Day celebrations. Shows were held throughout the L.A. Basin, including the Rose Bowl, Dodger Stadium, the Hollywood Bowl, and Huntington Park. Downtown L.A. was among other locations making the switch from fireworks to drone shows this year to help reduce the negative impacts on the environment. The South Coast Air Quality Management District has issued a particle pollution advisory until midnight tonight. Meanwhile, an ozone advisory linked to the excessive heat continues through tomorrow night. The concern about fireworks and other activity igniting brush fires does not end with the holiday, though. The National Weather Service says that on top of the heat wave peaking, this afternoon will be the driest through the weekend. Forecasters expect relative humidity to be down to the single digit in the deserts and just 10 to 15 percent in most mountain areas as well as the Inland Empire. Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass has imposed more limits on her signature program to get more affordable housing built in the city. David Wagner reports. In her first week in office, Bass fast-tracked approval of new affordable housing, taking the time down to weeks rather than months or years. Since then, she has exempted neighborhoods with single-family homes. Then this week, she banned streamlining in historic districts and on many properties with rent-controlled buildings. Jason Ward, an economist with RAND, says for many developers, these changes effectively gut the program. It's just turning something that was really remarkable into just a sort of another status quo type tool. L.A. is facing state mandates to plan for nearly 185,000 new low-income homes by 2029. For LAist, I'm David Wagner. California has adopted mandatory water conservation rules in urban areas. Over 400 cities and other urban water suppliers must now meet water use budgets that tighten over time. Individual residents won't be directly regulated but will likely feel the effects. The new measures are substantially weaker and conserve less water than a previous proposal from the state. State water staff, though, estimate that these measures will save 1.7 million acre feet of water by the year 2040. That is enough to supply almost half the state's population for a full year. Have you ever thought about being a foster parent? If you're Asian American, you could be particularly in demand because of your language skills and cultural background. But lack of awareness about fostering persists. Foster parent Peter Santa Maria is Filipino American and says many Asian households emphasize having their own kids. He and his wife have fostered four children of Asian descent over the last couple of years, and they see how they benefited from being in a home with similar customs and food. What some of these kids want is just to be able to live a normal life. Having that similar background, it does help a lot. 
An agency in Koreatown is leading the charge to recruit more Asian foster parents. Korean American Family Services is the country's first foster care agency focused on Asian American children. It has contracts with Orange and L.A. counties and has trained scores of foster parents. Coming up, why Valley Girl Speak isn't just confined to the San Fernando Valley. Support for LAist comes from Quality Start Los Angeles, sharing resources to help families teach children more than one language from birth. Speaking more than one language can help give children more of everything, not only job opportunities in the future, but also more self-confidence, success in school, more things to read, and more friends to talk to. You can find dual language learner resources in six languages, including Spanish, Armenian, Khmer, Korean, and Vietnamese at qualitystartla.org. Get Lit is back at Elias with spoken word performances from some of L.A.'s best young poets. Yeah, okay, that is great. Our featured poets are the West Hollywood Slam Team. It's a night to celebrate the best in L.A. poetry. July 12th at the Crawford in Pasadena. Tickets at LAist.com slash events. See you there. Back now to the L.A. Report. If you see people in unusual costumes milling about at the L.A. Convention Center, it's likely anime fans doing cosplay. The annual Anime Expo is underway, bringing together enthusiasts and industry insiders to celebrate anime, manga, music, fashion, cosplay, and artists. The event runs through Sunday. We all know that the rest of America thinks of Californians as speaking in a certain way, dubbed the Valley Girl accent. But did you know it's actually part of a linguistic phenomenon happening in California? Caitlin Hernandez reports. The Valley Girl archetype blew into popularity in the 80s as a signifier of what teenage girls enjoy, like expensive mall trips and popping bubblegum. But the Valley Girl sound is basically an informal way that people understand the California vowel shift, linguistics professor Teresa Pratt says. Here's an example. The ah vowel would be produced more like ah. So if I say, like, I have to get to class. Do you see how that sounds kind of Valley Girl when I say that? And the shift is found across the state, not just Southern California, where the Valley Girl stereotype started. For LAist, I'm Caitlin Hernandez. If you're planning an ocean swim anytime soon, you'll want to choose your destination carefully. The Los Angeles County Department of Public Health has posted ocean warnings at more than a dozen beaches because of elevated levels of bacteria. The advisory includes warning beachgoers to avoid the water near storm drains, piers, public restrooms, and creeks. Some areas such as Malibu and Santa Monica have multiple spots in the advisory. You can find a map of the problem spots at laist.com. In the desert, extreme heat has led to trail closures and a fire ban in Joshua Tree National Park through the weekend. Trails and roads in the Covington Flats area are closed off to the public, but could reopen early next week. If you must visit, park officials want you to take a lot of breaks on your hike, follow campfire rules, and stay hydrated because it's really hot. It'll be around 118 degrees the next day or two. Thank you for listening to the LA Report. You can read more news at laist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. We're introducing a new podcast from LA Studios, Passing the Mantle. Where we explore stories that connect generations. I'm Larry Mantle, host of LA 89.3's Air Talk. And I'm Desmond Mantle, his son and co-host. Despite our different paths, we share a deep curiosity about the world. On Passing the Mantle, we dive into societal trends and the moments that have shaped who we are. Listen to Passing the Mantle wherever you listen to podcasts.